We're reading the Parsha about the Mansur Mora, the rebellious son at the age of 13. He steals from his parents and he buys meat and wine. And it's obvious that he's developing an addiction. His parents see this, they take him to the Bezdin, and they tell the Bezdin, Zeb ben Suramora, a child, he's rebellious, he's a gluttonous child. And Bezdin, they give him malchus, they give him lashes. And if he repeats this behavior again, they put him to death. The parents take him to court and they say, he's repeated this behavior, they put him to death and they stone him. Chazal tell us, although he only stole, but since the Torah is forecasting the future of this child, that ultimately, that if he is not put to death, he will become a highwayman because he will be addicted to this type of gluttonous life, li- lifestyle, he will commit murder. So better he should die, his life should be taken now when he's in an innocent state, rather than when he will be in a much more culpable state. So the Mishnah tells us <clears throat> in Sanhedrin, Ben Sora Umora Lohoi Vloosid Lios never existed, never happened, and never will happen. Why? So Mark explains, because all the criteria which are stated in the Posuk, which have to be met to establish the child as this type of category, it's impossible to meet all the criteria. So what's the value of the Torah telling us this theoretical situation which is not really applicable because you can't meet the criteria? To study it and to be deserving reward for studying it. So the commentators, do we show them, ask, I mean, you can study anything. Mishnah tells us that if you say Krishma, after this man Krishma, it's Kil Korba Torah. I mean, you receive reward for studying Torah. I mean, so what's so unique and special about the portion of Ben Sora Mora, this rebellious son? So Reina Bachi cites the Rashba, Rishlom Ben Adaris, who explains there's a lesson to be drawn. Lidrus Kabul Schar means just doesn't mean to study Torah, it means to reflect on it, understand exactly what exactly is happening. The parents themselves, when they see this kind of behavior, they can easily dismiss it as an attribute to immaturity. Child's immature, it's going to pass. Although the Torah says, if it repeats itself, this is not going to pass. It's clearly an indication of an addiction, which will develop into something much more serious. So if the parents understand and accept what the Torah says, they will take the child, although they know the child will be put to death. So what is the model of Ben Mora? It's a mini model of the Akedah. Avraham Avinu, although he had the child at the age of 100, 37 years later, Hashem tells him, Halei As much as he loved him and he understood Yitzchak was the future of existence, he's the future patriarch, the moment Hashem says, bring him up as a sacrifice, did not hesitate. By Hashem Avraham Baboke, he rose early with alacrity, he's going to the Akedah. No hesitation. Identically here, the, the case, the model of Ben Mori is a parent has to be so dedicated to Hashem that all levels of personal conflict of interest has to be overridden. And it should not interfere and accept the word of Hashem for what it is. And that's the way a Jew has to live his life, regardless of the cost factor. If the Torah dictates this is the way the Jew has to function, that's the way he has to function. That's Jerosh or Kabul Schar to understand these parents, why they're taking the child to Besden, although they know what the outcome is going to be, the answer is because they suppressed all their personal feelings and they only followed the word of Hashem.